all television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. In the third year of King Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, a type of Antichrist, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first, as we saw in chapter 7 with the four beasts, which are symbolic of the one world system during the five month long hour of temptation, which we'll see in this chapter also. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, and Shushan can even mean a trumpet, as you can see in your Strong's Concordance, and it's when all six trumpets trumpets of deception are sounding at the same time that Satan appears as Antichrist called the little horn in verse 9 of this chapter as well as verse 8 of chapter 7. So Daniel was at Shushan in the palace which is in the province of Elam which means hidden and the four hidden dynasties play heavily into this and I saw in a vision and I was by the river of Uli and as you can see in your Smith's Bible dictionary this is a river that flows into the Tigris which is called Hiddekel in verse 4 of Daniel chapter 10 and Remember that the Tigris is 1,150 meters high and 1,150 miles long. That's 2,300, just as we'll see in verse 14 of this 8th chapter of the book of Daniel. But first, we're going to see in verses 3 through 8 the events that lead up to the woe of the fifth trumpet when the five-month-long hour of temptation begins. And it's the same thing we'll see in Daniel chapter 11 in the first 20 verses, beginning with the First World War, the result of which was the League of Nations, followed by the Second World World War, which brought about the United Nations, as well as Kenite occupied Israel. Going up to verse 20, when the one who sends a razor of taxes, which is the United Nations, is destroyed, after which the five month long hour of temptation begins. So, with all that in mind, Daniel chapter 8, verse 3 Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. Ephraim and Manasseh, ultimately, that is to say, the British Commonwealth and the United States of America. I saw the ram, which is a male sheep, pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. But as it's written in the last verse of Isaiah chapter 9, Manasseh Ephraim and Ephraim Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. And the two world wars where Germany was used by the shadow government of the Kenites to bring about first the League of Nations and then the United Nations in 1945. And as I was considering, behold, an he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground because it's symbolic of the shadow government of the Kenites, the hidden dynasties of education and economics having been globalized in 1830 and 1913, immediately followed by the world wars, which is when through Germany, that is to say Judah, they brought about the United Nations in 1945 after the two world wars, globalizing the hidden dynasties of politics, and in 1948, Kenite occupied Israel, the globalization of the hidden dynasty of religion, and the he-goat had a notable horn between his eyes, not a great horn, but a notable horn, Judah, that is to say, and this is why we see Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh symbolized by three horns in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, but first we see the result of the first two world wars, Manasseh, Ephraim, Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah, which is the notable horn in Daniel Daniel chapter 8 verse 5. Not the great horn, that's not until after the two world wars when the United Nations came into being, and we'll see that in verse 8. And he, the he-goat that is to say, using Germany during the world wars, came to the ram that had two horns which I had seen standing before the river and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close to the ram and he was moved with collar against him. And you'll see this word collar also in Daniel chapter 11 in the 11th verse which has to do with this same time period period, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground, and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. The United Nations coming into being in 1945, followed by Kenite occupied Israel in 1948, a direct result of the world war is a victory for Ephraim and Manasseh, seemingly, but in all reality, it was just the opposite. Therefore, the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn, which is the United Nations, 
Christians, in my opinion, was broken, the same word as destroyed in the Hebrew is in Daniel chapter 11, verse 20, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven at the woe of the fifth trumpet at the beginning of the five-month-long hour of temptation, the ram becoming the lion of Daniel chapter 7, along with Judah, those three horns which symbolize the Christian nations, with the bear being symbolic of the non-Christian nations, headed by Edom, which means red, and the he-goat becomes the leopard of Daniel chapter 7 at the woe of the fifth trumpet, the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties providing the infrastructure of the one world system, with Daniel's fourth beast being made up of Satan and his angels. Then after the deadly wounds, Satan appears as Antichrist, and those three horns are plucked up by the roots, and out of one of them, out of one of the four beasts of Daniel chapter 7, obviously the fourth beast, came forth a little horn which waxed exceeding great. And this word little has to do with time, as you can see in your Strong's Concordance. The word in the Hebrew is number 4704, which is the feminine of number 4705, adverbally a short time. The sixth trumpet only lasting for two and a half months. So a little horn, Satan in his role of Antichrist, waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. He'll appear in Jerusalem at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them, meaning most Christians will die spiritually when they worship Satan instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means. And notice in Revelation chapter 6, verse 13, which is the sixth seal, we see the stars of heaven fell unto the earth there also. The third you can read of in the sixth trumpet in Revelation chapter 9, slain spiritually when they worship the false Christ. That's when Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh are plucked up by the roots because they're no longer Christian nations at that time. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, claiming to be Jesus when he's really that old serpent called the devil and Satan, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. The daily sacrifice of a Christian being to sacrifice your time to serve the true Christ. That'll be taken away from most Christians because at that time they'll begin serving the false Christ, which is the in their right hand part of the mark of the beast, which is also in their forehead because it's the deception that causes them to worship the devil instead of Christ. With the United Nations coming into being in 1945, as far as the event that signified the point in time when the third trumpet began to sound, and the third trumpet lines up with the third vial and the second seal. So, 233, three, the second seal, the third trumpet, and the third vial. And if you examine the flag of the United Nations, you'll notice two olive branches. There's the two, and a circle divided into 33 sections. So, 233, three, two olive branches and 33 sections with the flag of the United Nations, which will provide the skeletal structure for the actual one world political system at the woe of the fifth trumpet. Remember, these trumpets continue sounding all the way up until the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet and destroys Satan's one world government. Remember, we saw an example brought forth in Daniel 3, where it wasn't until all six instruments were sounding at the same time, symbolic of all six trumpets of deception, that that the people were commanded to fall down and worship the image Nebuchadnezzar set up, a type of what happens whenever Satan appears as the false Christ at the woe of the sixth trumpet. And third on that list was the harp, which we already saw traced back to Jubal the Kenite, the father of such as handle the harp and organ, as we know from Genesis chapter 4 verse 21. Jubal meaning a stream of water, and as we're about to find out, the third trumpet and third vial have to do with the waters, which are symbolic of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So with that having been said, let's turn to Revelation chapter 6 and find out what the second seal has to do with. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 3, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast, the second living creature, say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, spiritually ultimately, whenever Satan appears, and there was given unto him a great sword. And as Christ said in Mark chapter 13, verse 7, and when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. So when you hear them cry peace and safety, and the one world political system 
wisdom written of in Revelation 13 emerges at the woe of the fifth trumpet, that's when the end, that is to say the final five months before the true Christ returns, is upon us. And that doesn't happen until Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth. That's at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and that's when all four of those beasts you can find written of in Daniel chapter 7 rise up together in a one world political system, and that happens once the great horn of the he-go written of in Daniel chapter 8 verse 8 is broken, so to speak, and then four notable ones, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the fourth beast replace it at the beginning of the five-month-long hour of temptation. So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return into his own land, signifying the end of World War I. So here we see the end of the description of the first king of the south, the United Kingdom and the British Commonwealth during World War I, Ephraim being one of the horns on the ram we saw in Daniel chapter 8. Next we'll see the second king of the south, Germany, which is Judah, in the second world war. And remember the result of the first world war was the League of Nations, and the result of the second world war was the United Nations, which is the great horn of the he-goat of Daniel chapter 8, but his son shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude of forces, and one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. Then shall he return and be stirred up even to his fortress, and the king of the south shall be moved with collar, Germany being the notable horn of the he-goat in Daniel chapter 8, not the great horn, but the notable horn used by the Kenites in the world wars to bring about the great horn of the he-goat at the end of World War II, the United Nations. You'll see this word collar in Daniel chapter 8 verse 7 as well and remember the last verse of Isaiah chapter 9 where it says Manasseh Ephraim and Ephraim Manasseh and they together shall be against Judah and so it was in both world wars and the king of the south shall be moved with collar and shall come forth and fight with him even with the king of the north Soviet Russia and he shall set forth a great multitude but the multitude shall be given into his hand and when he hath taken away the multitude his heart shall be lifted up and he shall shall cast down many ten thousands, but he shall not be strengthened by it. And you can read about the aftermath of World War II in the book of Obadiah. The king of the south in 1945 becoming Manasseh, which is the United States, who was used by the Kenites to bring about the United Nations that same year, which was when the third trumpet of Revelation chapter 8 began to sound. And in 1948, Kenite-occupied Israel came into being, which is when the fourth trumpet began to sound. Twenty-one years later, in 1969, the the fifth trumpet began to sound, five being grace in biblical numerics. And in my opinion, Russia's entry into Syria in 2015 is where Daniel chapter 11 verse 13 fast forwards to. And this is all gone into in greater detail in the Daniel 11 hypothesis on biblicalresearchlabs.com. For the king of the north shall return the third king of the north, which is the Russian Federation, and shall set forth a multitude greater than the former, and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches, and in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south, the United States, at this point in the chapter, the other horn of the ram back in Daniel chapter 8. Also the robbers of thy people, the he-goat of Daniel chapter 8, shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. Those who claim to be of Judah and are not, but do lie, that goat fig nation, who through their four hidden dynasties operate out of all the nations of the world, twisting reality in the minds of the biblically illiterate. It's a Kenite occupation occupied planet in all reality, so don't deceive yourself by focusing exclusively on one geographic location. So the king of the north, the Russian Federation, shall come and cast up a mount and take the most fenced cities, not just in Syria, but globally also, with communistic atheism by stealth through politics and the left-right paradigm symbolized by Ammon and Moab. And also at this time, we see what will become the bear of Daniel chapter 7 formulating, which is the Ezekiel 38 confederacy. In the arms of the South shall not withstand, neither his chosen people, the elected officials Americans think will save them from globalism, you could even say, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. The new world order, as it's called, cannot be stopped because it's the one world political system of Revelation 13. The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. That was the type, but in the future sense, these are two of the kings of the South we'll see in Daniel chapter 11. Ephraim, which is the British Commonwealth, and Manasseh which is the United States of America. Judah, which is Germany, another one of the kings of the south, we'll read of in Daniel chapter 11. Germany being who the he-goat utilized during the world wars to bring about first the League of Nations and then finally the United Nations in 1945, which is the great horn of the
the he-goat and the one who sends a razor of taxes in Daniel 11.20. The he-goat being the shadow government of the Kenites and the rough goat, and this word rough can even be translated devil, as you can see in your Strong's Concordance, the Kenites being of their father the devil, so the rough goat or the devil goat is the king of Grecia, but in the futurist sense is the shadow government of the sons of Cain, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king, the United Nations, who is also the one who sends a razor of taxes. Now that being broken or destroyed, same word we see in Daniel 11:20, whereas four stood up for it. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power, because it's the dragon, which is Satan, that gives the one world system his power and his seat and great authority at the woe of the fifth trumpet, as you can see in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. And in the latter time of their kingdom, in the latter half of the five month long hour of temptation after the deadly wound at the woe of the sixth trumpet when the transgressors are come to the full a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up satan in his role of antichrist the king of babylon of the end times the little horn and again that word little means a short space two and a half moons in the last half of the hour of temptation and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power because this is satan's role of antichrist and he shall destroy wonderfully spiritually with his deception and shall prosper in practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people the third that are slain spiritually at the woe of the sixth trumpet christians being the only group that can die spiritually and most will all but those of the seven thousand sadak initially who will be delivered up during that time which is when the holy spirit will speak through them bringing the 144,000 as well as whosoever will back into the many membered body of the true christ the same chain reaction we see a type of in the book of acts and we'll see it also in daniel chapter 11 verses 33 through 35 and through his policy also satan and his role of antichrist during the sixth trumpet he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many because he'll claim to be the prince of peace and a christian who's deceived into worshiping satan instead of christ which is what antichrist means dies spiritually meaning they won't take part in the first resurrection into eternal life when the true christ returns unless they repent and many will because of what the Holy Spirit will say through those who are delivered up.